No. No bus. I just B's book club. That was among the worst <laughs> that I've ever done. Uh, I was trying to do my hand like the hand is on the cover. Um, that's silly. Um, today, I would like to talk about Space Invaders, a novel by Nona Fernandez, a um, Chilean author who has written a lot of stuff um, that I'm unfamiliar with. It initially came out in 2013, um, was translated into English in 2019, um, is currently on sale, uh, at, you know, some, some specific space that I might or may not work at, I do, um, thus the sticker on the front, uh, cause I will be returning it, I finished it about a week ago, so I'm, I'm not super clear on all the details, but guess what? I liked it. I liked it. Um, uh, in a, um, in the way you would enjoy a book about, um, a group of people's memories of a young girl who went missing during the Pinochet re regime. Um, this is very much a novel about uh, living in Chile in the years um, when Pinochet had established a uh, right-wing dictatorship that transitioned into a sort of uh, false democracy at a certain point. Um, I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a historian of Chile. I've never been. Um, I am a communist, so I'm, I'm like, you know, familiar with uh, Pinochet in terms of, uh, you know, his his use of the Chicago Boys theory to um, to advance neoliberalism in uh, in Chile specifically um, as a as a sort of test bed for for the neoliberalization of um, countries like uh, the UK and the United States, um, the, you know, breach of the IMF um, to project that into other third world countries, etc, etc. Um, you should look that shit up if you don't know. 9-11. 9-11-73, um, specifically. Um, this is a, this is a book uh, that, uh, I, hmm, how to introduce it? It's, uh, there's no chapter that is longer than three pages, is maybe a way to talk about it formally, um, initially. Um, it is a, it, it's a, it's a book about uh, a group of people remembering a, a girl from their elementary school class who uh, went missing, or who they have not had contact with in, in some decades. Um, the girl is named Estrella. Um, the other characters are named, um, but it's like a whole jumble of things in a way that I think is actually interesting. Um, uh, and I'll get to in just a second. Um, but yeah, it's it's a bunch of, of very short chapters about individuals from that group remembering certain things that happened, or there are chapters that are just like letters from Estrella to one of the members of the group. Um, they, they refer to themselves as a we primarily, although they're all named, I believe. Um, there, there's kind of a lot of names in this actually for, for a very short book in a, in a, in a way that I found cool. Um, it didn't really like, the names did not, um, stick with me and I didn't take notes. So, um, there's that, I guess, uh, failure of my brain probably more than anything else. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot of memories of, of these encounters with this girl that sort of, um in really succinct ways uh, end up basically functioning like a, a sort of cycle of short stories to talk about specifics about um, life in Chile at the time and uh, in and then up into the 90s when this is like set it's like most memories are happening from like 91 to 94 I believe um, uh, of of the mid to late 80s um, uh, early to late 80s, actually. Um, I think it starts in 81. Um, let, let me... Uh, do, 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 first life. Yeah. Santiago de Chile, 1980. A 10-year-old girl walks into Avenida, Mid Ma Avenida Mata School holding her father's hand. Into an Avenida Mata School holding her father's hand. A leather, hat, a leather satchel hangs on one shoulder and the laces of her right shoe are undone. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of fine detail that um, sets uh, character and world alight. Um, this is one of those books that um, 
I can actually like fairly confidently say this. This is one of those books that I um, enjoyed. I, I found the prose um, compelling um, up until like maybe the two thirds point. Um, and then it like just absolutely started firing on all cylinders for me. And I was like, oh, this is a, this is a special thing. And I could say that confidently because I'm like, this is not me saying, you know, the real Dark Soul starts, you know, 80 hours in or whatever. This is me saying, like, literally, uh, I read this in a day. Um, I, I'm a fast reader. Um, I take lots of small breaks at work and stuff like that and just read it, you know, I take a five minute break and not a lot, but, you know, a reasonable amount of five minute breaks and um, can, especially with a book this small with the, you know, the generous typeset, um, probably read five to seven pages of it uh, at a chunk. And you add a lunch break in there and a, and a commute, and that's uh, this book is, is a day for me. Um, so saying, you know, you have to get two-thirds in until it starts really firing is like saying, you know, um, read the first 20 pages of any book, in, in, if a, especially a more dense one, um, which I think is not, a, not an impossible ask. I, I understand that other people have different relationships to their media consumption than I do. Um, I'm a, I am a finisher of things, generally speaking. Um, but yeah, I, um, and I, in that, and I don't mean that in the way that, like, you know, you just have to suffer through the first two thirds. I mean that in a, um, there is a lot of setup that happens through sort of elliptical ways, but is always a joy to read that really fucking pays off at the, at the back, uh, back third of this book in a, in a way that I was like completely blown away from. And, and maybe that's just a refrain you'll hear from me, um, repeatedly because, uh, sometimes my brain just takes a while to synthesize things, e even if a while is like, you know, uh, a lunch break, um, for a, for a shorter thing. Um, but I think it's worth saying because this is my experience. And this is a document of my experience sometimes. I guess it's always a document of my experience because I'm talking about things that I experienced. Um, but I mean, what, what this is, what this is, is, is me talking into, a, into, into my phone camera to myself because it's just bees here. It's just bees here. It's just bees here. It's just bees here. Um, yeah. Listen, the bit's still funny to me, so I'm gonna keep doing it until it's not. And then I probably just won't do this thing anymore. And so it'll be a forever record of how long no no buzz. It was just a funny funny bit to me. Um where hopefully I uh talk in a somewhat interesting way about certain books. Uh you know, I like to talk about form. And uh it's not a not a thing that a lot of people want to do, uh, with me specifically in, in my life at this particular moment. Um, yeah, um, I, so the thing I, I pushed off saying that I, I would like to sort of dive into a little bit is the sort of structural thing I was talking about, right? Like the, the way that this novel is a, a collection of remembrances from people after the fact, um, who are all named, but aren't really given much more than a name. Um, they are given one thing, though. Um, there's a there's a section, uh, it's a particular chapter, sort of toward the beginning, where they all, where they talk about, uh, here's, here's one example. Chapter four of, of First Life, the first section. Maldonado dreams about letters. They're old letters in the handwriting of 10-year-old girls. Letters that she and Gon Gonzalez used to mail to each other as if they didn't see each other in the classroom every day, as if they were falling apart then as they are now. Um, I'm jumping up ahead a little bit. Uh, Fuenzalita says everybody dreams their own way. So while she hears voices and others see only pictures, Maldonado has every right to dreams constructed out of words. Each brick is a verb, an article, an adjective, and the frame goes up, stairs are built, the dreams become a tall tunnel connecting heaven and hell. Maldonado dreams blue words in girls' handwriting. Um, the important thing there being everybody dreams in their own way. So one of the things that happens here, um, here here's chapter five. Riquelme dreams of spare hands, the hands from Gonzalez's house. Riquelme is the only one of us who ever went there, so his dreams are like testimony. Um, uh, let's see. 
if I can find another one real quick. Uh, I've already see. I'm, I'm just flipping through it. I'm already on Second Life, the the second the second part of this novel. Um, yeah. Okay. I can't find the the exact passage. I did not take any notes. Um, again, read this in a day. Um, and what a day it was. Uh, you get the sense that each of the people that sort of make up the collective narrator or or the collective rememberer um, have their own capacities and their own abilities and their own specifically forms of memory. And I really like that. Um, I like that in the sense of, you know, um, the way that forming community around a certain thing can allow certain people's ability or capacity to shine in relation to others. Um, I like it as a formal technique of, uh, as a way of allowing um, Fernandez to write um, with, with a hyper specificity on um, certain aspects of a memory based on who she is sort of tapping as one of her characters. Um, I like it as a, as a, as a shared interiority almost as a, as a way of saying that um, what you could, what you could describe as, you know, this could be very easily in some ways, right? A novel about, one person remembering another person and wondering what happened to them. And you could probably get to, from that conceit, all of the, the specificities that I just mentioned, right? You could get the chapters that are just the letters between people. You could get to the chapters that are um, hyper-specific about a certain memory that one person has. Um, this could all be contained within a single person, within a single character. Um, but it's not. And this is the crucial thing. Uh, this is this is why I, I think it's an interesting bit of, of shared interiority that um, formally the style of writing, the styles of writing that happen don't have to um, be an expression of, of this multiplicity of characters. But because they are, we get a sense that that this this we that is referenced throughout the book, this this group of people, each contributes certain aspects to this memory, um, and in doing so, form a sort of cohesive unit, form a community um, of of people who are haunted by this uh, this young woman who who um, was at a formative part of their life. Um, and that and what that does is it kind of like forecloses certain other things, right? Like if we were if we were to rewrite this novel, right? If we were to say um, hop a hop a universe over or whatever, where this book is exactly the same except for it's a, a single point of view character, um, what that does is it structurally makes it much more similar to something like a romance, right? It, it's a it's a lost love story, maybe at a certain point, um, in a way that it just doesn't read as because of their multiplicity of, of individuals coming together into a, a singular interiority that is, that is remembering this thing. Um, not because you couldn't have a, 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 you know, love lost kind of story in that same way, but because we don't have the history of, of that sort of thing, or at least I'm not aware of of a long uh, literary tradition that says um, when, you know, when people gather around a table to talk about somebody that they haven't seen for a long time, they are certainly pining over a long lost love. Um, and that's even that example isn't quite right because they aren't gathering over a table. I mean, presumably they do do this sometimes. This, this group of people does sometimes sit at a diner or a bar or whatever and, and, and talks through their dreams with each other and that's how they can share this thing but like we don't really get those scenes either we just get the truth of each of these individuals dreams and the truth that they are a, a collective um a community um and i like that
it's fine. I, I also wish I had a better, um, <laughs> better wrapping up point than that. Uh, but I simply do not. Um, and that's just how it goes sometimes, you know? It's, uh, um, I think, I think it's a, I think it's a pretty fucking cool book. Um, you know, P pick it up. Pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. It's a ska joke. Thanks for not watching. <laughs>